Hey y'all, what's going on? I'm here for Love and Hip Hop Hollywood Season 4, Episode 14, the season finale. But before we get into it, um, what's going on with Hazel and her boyfriend? Now, I know her and Jess, you know, well, them and Jess Hilarious been kind of getting into it these last couple of days on Instagram or whatever. But I just saw something on um, Famulos' uh, Facebook page where, you know, um, Hazel was sitting up here talking about dark-skinned women hating on her and all this other stuff and calling them monkeys and everything, I guess, you know, coming at just hilarious or whatever. And then I saw something about, you know, uh, you know, Rose Burgundy or whatever, you know, trying to condemn uh, gays and everything like that because, you know, somebody supposedly... Um, exposed him for being gay or whatever so he's you know over there trying to condemn gay people this day and the third and she's like you know agreeing with him and i'm just like uh i hope zell ain't still hanging with her you know i know he not gay i believe zell is uh bi but still he's a part of that community and like yeah i hope he still ain't hanging with her but Y'all, it's a lot. Y'all go over there on Famulos' Facebook page or whatever. Um, I don't know if her if I don't know if her Instagram page is back up. Um, and y'all go to the shade room. They might got it too. I don't know. But if just in case you don't know what the fuck is going on. But yeah, it's just I'm just I'm not even gonna get into it. But anyways, let's get to the episode. So the episode starts off with, you know, Nikki and Monice. Um, going to see, you know, Tierra at the rehab center, you know, together. And, you know, um, TT has finally come around to realize that she did have a problem and everything. But she still kind of felt that they forced her to, like, have an intervention. And it's kind of like, I mean, Tierra, like, <laughs> like, I mean, I don't know what she wanted them to do. I don't know what she wanted them to ask her to have an intervention that's not what an intervention is you don't ask a person but like i said before in the past i do felt like it was just something about the way they did it that just didn't sit right with me you feel what i'm saying but um anyway so she's sitting up here telling them pretty much she's not sure who's gonna be in her life when she gets back or whatever this day and the third monice kind of senses that she might be one of those people and everything and monice is like you know i don't want to lose your friendship but, you know, um, if this is what's going to, you know, help your sobriety or whatever for me to step back or whatever, then I'll do that. You know what I'm saying? And Nikki, she's saying that she's always been there for Tierra this day and the third. And, you know, she can't speak for Monice and the rest of them and everything. But, you know, um, they asked her, has she spoken to Cisco? She hasn't talked to Cisco or whatever. So that was that with them. But, um, like I said before, I feel like that they shouldn't even had exposed this, you know, situation on um reality TV like that. I really think she shouldn't have been on the show until she got herself together. You know what I'm saying? But anyways, um we get Fizz, Ray, and J Bug. They meet up in the studio or whatever. Bug he walks in because Fizz and Ray are already there. And you know, um Fizz admits that he never told Bug about, you know, Ray J being Omarion's replacement or whatever. And I'm just like, now you should have already known this was going to be um, a disaster from the get-go because you didn't let, you know, you didn't let motherfuckers know what the fuck was going on. So, I mean, you can't even be mad at the outcome that happened here. But anyways, so, you know, um... You could tell Bug is not with it or whatever. You know, and then to make matters even worse, Ray J going to sit up here and come with some posters or whatever, talking about some, I mean, we could call the group, you know, Ray 2K or, you know, B2 Ray. And I'm just like, how you just going to come in and try to, like, change up the name like that? Like, no. Like, Johnny Gill, when he came into New Edition, he didn't try to come in and say, uh you know, Johnny edition or, you know, Johnny um, and new edition or nothing like that. Like, no, he fell in line with the rest of the motherfuckers, despite the fact that he was already a solo artist. Like, what? I can't. <laughs> like, I just, I can't with Ray J. But anyway, so, you know, um, 
Boog is like, I mean, let's be honest here. Ain't none of us been on that level that B2K, you know, left off at, you know, far as like um individually or whatever. You know, and Boog feels like that it needs to be all the original members, in which I do agree with, you know what I'm saying? Now, you know, with Johnny Gill, of course, that was, you know, different. But I'm just saying, in this situation, like, yeah, it needs to be all the original members. But anyways, um... He's like, that's like putting, you know, a fake, you know, Michael Jackson on the stage or whatever. And, you know, Ray J starts to get offended. And, you know, Ray sitting up here talking about some. He feel like he would step the group up vocally pretty much. And I'm just like. <sighs> okay, Ray J. Um, so, you know, um. Ray, Ray J sitting up here talking about something. Don't act like, you know, uh, B2K is the biggest thing, you know, or was the biggest thing out or whatever, this, that, the third. And, you know, um, Boog was like, well, you know, come sit over here so we can get, you know, get things cleared or whatever. And Ray, he's like, I mean, we can, you know, fade right now, just you and me or, or whatever. And producers, they come in like, hold on, Ray J, like, what the, what the fuck is you talking about here? Boog is like, I mean, I'll be outside. He takes his mic off or whatever, and he leaves, and that's that. That was that. I was just like, yeah, Ray J was doing way too much in that situation. In that situation, it was just so unnecessary. Then we get, you know, Keisha and Booby pretty much starting their um divorce proceedings or whatever, and they're supposed to have joint custody. But I did hear something in the blogs a couple of weeks ago about him asking for like uh spousal support and full custody or whatever, but. So, yeah, I don't know what's going on with that. Booby came out and said that wasn't true. So, I just, I don't know. I'm confused in that whole situation, whatever. You know, um, Keisha, you know, she's like, you know, isn't this exciting or whatever? And he's like, man, don't use the word exciting. You know what I'm saying? And she's like, no, I'm not saying it like that. I'm just saying. And he was like, but, yeah, we getting the divorce or whatever. And she's like, but, I mean, we're still going to be family, though. You know what I'm saying? So, he says, you know, pretty much that he loves her or whatever. And, you know, um, she's like, oh, that's cool or whatever. I said, Keisha, <laughs> that man know you and him are not getting back together. Like, calm down. You know what I'm saying? Like, y'all know how Keisha do, though. But um, she does say it back to him or whatever. And he wants a hug and she's running away from him. She's like, oh, no, no, no touchy feeling stuff. I don't want to feel it. Like, no, no. <laughs> I thought that was so funny, but, um, anyway, so, then we get Safari and Ray J, they're, you know, um, at the skating rink or whatever, and Ray J tells him about, you know, Fizz asking him to be in B2K, Safari is laughing, he's like, wait a minute, now, I ain't know that they was gonna, like, ask you or whatever to join and everything, he was like, I told him to go ahead and do it, do it without Omarion, but to ask you, like, what? So, you know, he tells about, you know, Ray J is telling him about, you know, the situation he had with Boog or whatever. And pretty much how he felt like Boog tried to disrespect him and everything. And, you know, um, he's sitting up here talking about egos and all this other stuff. I said, Ray J, the only person that had an ego was you. Boog was chilling. Like, I'm just saying. But anyway, so Safari so tells him to dead it because the shit is so fucking petty. You know what I'm saying? And he tells him about his decision to move back to New York. And you could tell Ray was kind of disappointed or whatever. Because, you know, Safari is his boy. But he respects the decision. You know, uh, Safari has his blessing. And Safari is going to throw a party, you know, a going go away party for himself. So then we get Donatella's, you know, showcasing... And Brooke and Masika are backstage or whatever. Donatella comes and talks about how beautiful they look. And, you know, uh, she's like, Masika, you were very, very naughty or whatever. And Masika was like, but well, shit, I could skip Christmas this year. Like, it ain't, you know. <laughs> And, you know, um, Donatella was like, yeah, you know, and you was just donking and donking on her head and everything. Like, the way she was um, describing this shit, I was just so fucking weak i was like oh my god i was like stop donatella stop <laughs> like she was just really like reenacting the shit it was just so funny but anyways hazel was not going to be there because you know hazel tried to make in in the last episode hazel tried to make donatella choose between her and masika and of course um masika is donatella's girl so that's who um donatella is going to ride with 
So, you know, Masika performs first, and I was just like, like, eh, like eh, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Then we have Brooke and Bridget at the bar or whatever. You know, um, Brooke is like, you know, um, are you singing my song tonight or whatever? Because if you needed a song or whatever, you could perform it. And Bridget was like, oh, you, she was like, what, what song are you talking about? That tired ass girl fight song? And Brooke was like, you know, I mean, it still pays my bills or whatever. And I was like, really? <laughs> like, really? Okay. But I, mean, I just, I, I mean, I don't know, but, um, I'm not in her pockets, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, so, um, Bridget is sitting up here, you know, talking about, you know, all of her accomplishments and all this other stuff. And, you know, they just going back and forth. It was just a lot of confusion with their interaction. Bridget was sitting up here saying how she don't give a fuck about, you know, Brooks man or whatever, this, that, and the third. And, you know, um... They start talking about Booby taking Bridget to, you know, Cantalina or whatever. And Brooke was like, no, honey, Booby was desperate because I left him lonely and all this other stuff. And, you know, um, next thing you know, Bridget sits up here and calls, you know, Brooke salty like the pretzels that was at the bar or whatever and tries to throw the pretzels on uh you know Brooke or whatever. And they didn't get on Brooke because Brooke had a good reflex and, you know, um, hit them out of um, Bridget's hand or whatever. And security rushes in and everything. And, you know, um, she sits up here and talk about the agreement that, you know, her and uh, Bridget had or whatever. And I'm just like, man, fuck that agreement. You feel what I'm saying? And I'm just like, I'm sorry. Like, I kind of am feeling like maybe you kind you kind of one of them people that you kind of do know who and who not to try, Brooke, because had that been Hazel E, you would have been on her like white on rice. But with uh Bridget, you want to keep on bringing up this uh agreement bullshit about never putting hands. Man, all that shit would have went out the motherfucking... All that shit should have went out the window on last week's episode. But it definitely should have went out the window this week when she threw them damn pretzels at you. Fuck what you talking about. But whatever. Anyways, so, you know, Brooke, she performs or whatever. It was cool, you know what I'm saying? Um... Then we, you know, Bridget, she takes the stage. It was cool, whatever. You know, as Bridget is taking the stage, Booby shows up with some flowers for Brooke or whatever. And, you know, Brooke is like, oh, you know, um, I mean, if you're here to see Bridget, she's on the stage right now. And he like, huh? You know what I'm saying? And she's like, um, you went on the trip on the trip with Bridget or whatever, and you never keep secrets from me. Like, what's up with that? And he was like that he ain't wanna, you know, go there by himself and everything. He like, look, you sent me a text message and like you didn't even call me. Like, what's up with that? So, you know, Brooke asks, you know, did they ever have sex or whatever? And instead of Booby answering the question, he deflects and says, you know, um, it says, you know, I didn't know where me and you um st um stood. You know what I'm saying? And so um, and I I'm sorry. I would have I would have backtracked that whole conversation. I would have like, ah, nigga, I asked the question. Okay, you ain't about to get out this one. But anyway, so you know, um, she pretty much is just like, you know, you right or whatever because I still have unfinished business with Marcus, but just don't keep no more secrets from me or whatever. So that was that with them. They good again. Um, then we get Ray and um Ray Fizz and you know Jay Boog because Fizz had texted him, you know, earlier on in the episode or whatever about um meeting about um fizz and um i mean about ray j and bug meeting up you know to hash shit out like grown men so um fizz apologizes for not being straight up with the both of them or whatever ray sitting up here talking about how he felt pretty much disrespected or whatever and bug was like i mean you was becoming aggressive and everything but if you felt like i disrespected you i apologize i don't feel like bug should have apologized i felt like if anybody should have been apologizing it should have been ray's ass because he was doing the absolute most and it wasn't that serious like bug wasn't trying to take away the stuff that you have done in your career but he's saying that b2k had way more shit had way more hits than any of us have had 
combined. You know what I'm saying? So that's what he was saying. He wasn't trying to take away from what you've done in your career or whatever. It's just like, come on. You know what I'm saying? But Ray felt like it wasn't fair to make that comparison because of the simple fact that he was never in the group. And I'm just like, whatever. So anyways, you know, um, pretty much that that was that with them you know they squashed the shit or whatever but pretty much they just gonna leave it on the table they not gonna go any further with you know them using ray j to bring the um you know bring the group back together but anyways um then we get brooke and marcus you know brooke is talking about you know how hurricane harvey you know affected her her being from houston and you know her family you know being stuck there or whatever and you know um the conversations that she had with her mom and everything and she's talking to marcus about it on the beach so you know um they start talking about the song or whatever that, you know, um, Marcus so-called, you know, gave away and this, that, and the third. And, you know, um, she sent up here pretty much telling him that she was serious about them spending the rest of their lives together. But she don't feel like that he was. And he claims that he was ready. He shows her the ring just not to give it to her as we have seen so many times on this franchise okay but um like i said he shows her the ring and everything and then she apologizing or whatever and talking about some you know i didn't know it's like i mean of course you wouldn't know you i mean of course you wouldn't have known brooke like i just hate how she just really lets him like manipulate her mind like that as if he didn't do shit you feel what i'm saying as if he wasn't the cause of all of this bullshit you know what i'm saying but i'm not about to keep on preaching about that shit whatever um he claims that they're not they're not ready and they still got work to do so they kissing and making out on the beach whatever that's that with them then we have safaris you know going away party um almost everybody is there you know of course we're missing a few people but um, Zell and Bridget, they're together or whatever. Booby walks over and, you know, Zell gives them a minute. And Bridget is like, you know, um, I know about Brooke being invited to, you know, Cantalina or whatever. He admits that, yeah, she was invited first or whatever. And she's like, so I was just the backup plan. And he was like, nah, nah, you know what I'm saying? Don't look at it like that or whatever. And, you know, um, he wants to continue to see her or whatever. And she's like, well, you need to continue to be honest or whatever. And, you know, he's just like, pretty much he likes that spice, you know, as he would probably say that, you know, she be giving him or whatever. So they hug. I guess that's all it took for her to, you know, hug him and forgive him. Like, whatever. I'm so over Brooke, Bridget, Booby, Marcus. Uh, over it. Anyway, so then Safari, he got Nikki up on the stage or whatever, kicking a freestyle to her and asking, can he hit one, you know, hit one more time, you know, have sex with her one more time or whatever before he goes. So, you know, um, Bonice and Nikki, they're talking to Safari and Fizz about Tierra or whatever. Monice notices the distance between her and Tierra and everything. And, you know, next thing you know, um... AD shows up to, you know, take Monice to the side and everything. And, you know, she misses Mo. And, you know, Monice is like, well, I want to build, but I don't want to, you know, be put down because I'm so difficult or whatever. And AD is like, yeah, you are difficult, but loving you made it easier to deal with. You know what I'm saying? And Monice pretty much says that she has to think about it, whatever. So then Hazel approaches ray j or whatever and ray j he looked like he was kind of shook when she came up i was like shook ones <laughs> but yeah he looked like he was kind of shook a little bit so she confronts him about the bet or whatever he admits that it was over the top it wasn't right and she sit up here saying how you know she's loyal or whatever and when she gets you know jabbed like that you know what i'm saying it makes her act like a monster and you know you taking me as a joke or whatever and ray is like listen i don't look at you as a joke and everything you know um you came and slayed the studio i said i know you lying 
he lied. But anyways, so he's like, you know, people are going to talk or whatever. You just got to, you know, um, stunt on them or whatever he was saying to her and he was like you know i push people to be great or whatever i said ray j you really you really finesse your way out that situation for real because she took the bait or whatever and she forgave him and she hugged him and everything then we get um tt and cisco in the studio he showed well tt was in the studio or whatever then cisco showed up or whatever and, you know, he's been blowing her phone up or whatever. And she told him to stop by if he needed some closure. I'm like, for fucking what? Y'all broke up. Like, I don't understand that whole closure thing. Like, when a person shows you their actions and shows you what it is, that's the fucking closure right there. Like, the closure was when y'all broke up. You feel what I'm saying? Like, he was wrong, he cheated, or whatever, this, that, and the third, and you broke up with him. And then on top of that, for him, for the simple fact that he was in the wrong and he needs closure, fuck out of here. I would not have gave that nigga the time a motherfucking day. You can miss me with that bullshit. But anyways, you know, I guess, you know, because of the show, she had to entertain it. But anyways, so, you know, um... He's still sitting up here talking about some um, that she didn't need rehab or whatever. And I'm like, that's exactly why you don't need to be around now because you still a motherfucking enabler, okay? And she was like, no, I mean, it was a blessing or whatever. He claims that he tried to help the best way he could, but she didn't want to be honest with him and all this other stuff. And, you know, she was like, I mean, you know... I went to rehab for me. It ain't none of your motherfucking business. You know what I'm saying? Because we ain't together no more. And, you know, he's sitting up here, well, you know, I guess I just moved differently or whatever because I wouldn't abandon somebody just because um, they wouldn't, they don't keep it real. Something like, some dumb shit he was saying. I don't know, and I don't give a damn. I can't stand his ass. But, you know, he was like, you know, he's still, like... He's still acting like as if Tierra owe him something. She don't owe you a goddamn thing, Cisco. That's what you fail to realize. You feel what I'm saying? He still felt like sh that, you know, she should have contacted him and all this other stuff. And, you know, she was like, you know, um, I was the I was the one acting funny when we got to L.A. You, you know, when we got to L.A., you stopped taking me out and all this other stuff. You just wanted to stay in the crib just for you to be with another bitch having a good time with her. And he's sitting up here talking about some, I wasn't hanging out with Amber the same time I was hanging out with you. And Tierra already knows that's motherfucking bullshit. And she tells him, like, can you just keep it the fuck real? And he was like, you know what, you right. I, I fucked up and everything. And so... He's like, so how you feel about me now, whatever, now that I finally admit, you know, that I was wrong. And Tierra was like, I don't feel nothing for you, my nigga. Like, fuck out of here. So that pretty much was the episode. Of course, you know, we have, you know, everybody's, you know, closing or whatever, which was some bullshit because nobody really said anything that I cared about. But yeah, that was the episode, y'all. Um, I'll be back in here for uh, part one of the reunion um make sure you guys like comment and subscribe make sure you guys come back yeah and i'll see you guys in a little bit